Hi folks, I hope all is good. Today I have what most Barlow collectors consider the most elusive Barlow out in the market. And if it's not the most elusive, it's uh, right up there, probably top three. Um, before we take a look at it though, let's do a quick spin around the block. A lot of the stuff I have out here has been out here for a while. We'll take a look at it anyway. There is some of my other Bulldog knives. And one of my favorite carries is the C.J. Johnson uh, made in Sheffield. Four and a half inch ebony handle. Which I've been carrying the last couple days. Um, back there is the... Schrade Walden Electrician's Knife and a Victorinox. Uh, the Canal Street Fixed Blade, which I'll be doing a video on soon. Big John Henry, Buck 110. Um, the Buck 532 in Indigo Blue. A Ulster Pre-World War II Official Girl Scout Knife, which I want to do a video on. And, of course, over here, Shatton Morgan and some more Barlows. But, anyway, let's first take a look. This isn't the original box. Um, I don't see many of these knives that I'm going to show you in a minute that, that actually have the original box. But I'll show you. They're kind of their little mission statement. Bulldog brand knives are handmade and each blade is individually hammer forged. Over 240 hand operations are in each knife. Due to the many hand operations by master cutlers, all Bulldog brand knives are offered on a limited basis. Guaranteed free of manufacturing defects. So... Let's pull it out and take a look at it. You guys are going to like this one. What you thinking? Okay, we'll leave it right there for a second. Um, <clears throat> little history. I'm going to leave a couple links. In the description box um, for people that haven't read the history on Bulldog uh, knives with the different generations there's actually seven generations and this is the first generation um, Charlie Dorton started Bulldog Knife Company in 1978 um, shortly thereafter in the early 1980s a gentleman by the name Dave Scott joined uh, joined Charlie in the marketing aspect, and S and D Enterprises was born, and their office was in uh, Maysville, Kentucky, and Bulldog Brand never actually had a factory; they always commissioned all their knives, and for the first generation. Um, they commissioned Frederick Olberts in Germany to build their knives. And let's see, what else we got? Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it for that part. And what I'll do is, like I said, I'll leave a, um, a couple links down in the description box. And everyone can take a look at that on the history. Now... This is said to be, you'll see it's a, it says tobacco on the bolster. One of the marketing gimmicks on this was you'll see it's a slightly altered spear point. And what this was for was um, because their home office was in Kentucky, uh, I guess there was a lot of people that chew tobacco. And the altered tip was to... Um, cut the tobacco out of the tobacco tin. And this was before they, 
they would mince the um, chewing tobacco where you could just kind of pinch it with your hand or your fingers. Um, you know, this was when they would just compact the leaves. So you would have compacted tobacco leaves, and every time you'd try and pinch, you'd either get too much or not enough. So the tip was designed to kind of go in there and carve out a good hunk, a, um, you know, a preferable amount for whoever was going to be the one chewing it. So that was their little gimmick on here. Um, you'll see the frosted etch on the blade says our best S and D. And that was for Scott and Dorton, which was their last names. But, um, Dave Scott thought of this. This was his marketing ploy. This whole, this whole tobacco Barlow thing was his gig. Um, as you'll see, it's a beauty. This is all completely handmade. I don't know for sure if it was made by one artisan or not, but um, the Olberts company was one of the finest German cutleries around. So, but anyway, they um, they commissioned them to build so many of these. I don't know what the production amount is. But as you'll see, it's a beauty and it's well sought after, especially the Arbest. Um, if you notice on most of the um, later Bulldogs, they used a Bulldog Etch. This here is the only brand, the Arbest brand, was the first generation Bulldogs. It's the only, only place you'll see that with the S&D Frosted Etch. And it has some um, uh, unique tang stamps, to say the least. It was made with English steel. Doesn't say um, what kind of steel, but they got the steel from England. And I'll show you that in a minute when we take a better look at it. There, that's a little better. It was a little too bright. has a little badge on there, but it's so small and so shiny that it looks right in place. Beautiful green jig bone, high polish on everything, back springs, big long matchstick pole, and you'll see the spear point is kind of modified and we'll even have a better look at that once I show you the mechanics. This knife is said to have the best action of a knife made in that day. It's about a six pole but it has some severe walk and talk. Wait till you hear this thing. And this baby's just in beautiful shape. I wish I could have got the box, but I probably would have had to pay. And when you find one of these with the box, you're way over $200. I got this for a good deal, um, $170. I worked them down. And I think it's worth every cent because if I put this back on eBay... It's easily over $200. There's not many of them. And the people that have them don't want to sell them. And this is the original one with the spear point. You'll see a lot with the uh, razor edge. Or the razor blade. Which I don't think is as classical as this one here. You'll see on the etch, S&D Cut Company. But we'll take a better look at that in a minute. This pile side is as amazing as the mark side. Some beautiful bone. If you look at the pins, there's uh, four pins in there. 
but you'll see they're they're flawless when they're hammered in they're not dented or nothing like that really nice tobacco stamp this definitely is one of my centerpiece barlows that's for sure okay let's um see how it looks and sounds move this down a little bit let's see i need to get a little better lighting here for you guys cuz this this handle is nice don't want to drop it let's move it a little closer Get the lighting right up here there we go it's a little bit blingy they have polish Let's take a look. I think it would be your standard size. Three and a half inch. With a two and a half inch cutting edge and two and three quarter inch blade. Now there is a little, little blemish here in the frost. The frost etch. But this is a 1986, so that makes it 34 years old. I got fingerprints all over it. But let's hear how it sounds. Go over here to the pen blade. Gator snap. Oops. Check out for a little bit of a gap up here. How many fingerprints I got on it already? It's one thing with high polished knives. But look at that. Nice solid build on it. If you look at the rounded heads on the pins, just a masterful job. 240 operations. Uh, like I said, I don't know if it's one artisan doing all 240 steps. Or if they just have um, specialists do each. Tang stamp on this side says it's got the Bulldog brand. Um, the two pit bulls going at it. Handmade. And on this side. You'll see. S&D Cutlery. There we go. Hammer forged selenogen Germany. Now here's where it gets special. English steel. Is it 1985 or 1986? Their stamping wasn't too good. Could be a 1985. Oh. No, that's a six. 1986. English steel. Then on this side, we have the two pit bulls fighting again. Nice, uh, 
match match strike nail nick there with a very pointy pen blade and as you'll see I guess that would work to get down into a um, tin of tobacco and cut out a section that you would want I know a lot of people don't like the frost on the blade but I guess that was their kind of their trademark thing it comes down so quick you want to let it down soft everything centered sure enough beautiful green bone so there you have it one of the most elusive Barlow's out on the market. Okay, now for the finale, I guess we'll just put out a couple other Bulldog Barlow's. This would be the first generation. A fifth generation, I believe. And a sixth generation made by GEC. These first two were made in Germany by the, the Olberts, Frederick Olberts. And the last one was made here in America. So, my friends, until next time, take care. Peace. Bye-bye.